for your fertilizer business, I believe you wanted to build a large business in Africa, mm -hmm. other parts of Africa. Can you talk to us about this um, strategy? Why it was necessary? Why Africa? Why? Yeah, why Africa? <laughs> well, you know the story of the, the African story of the, the, the two shoemakers who visit an African village and, and, and everybody's barefoot. So one of them says, let's, there's no business here, let's go. And the other one says, no, this is where there is business. So it's, it's that philosophy from, uh, inherited from the telecom years. You know, the, one of the challenges when we were trying to introduce competition in Africa is that we're saying mobile could make a difference, right? Uh, at the time where mobile penetration was nothing to speak of. Most African countries had a few thousand users of mobile, mm. including Morocco. When, when we decided to deregulate and uh, uh, introduce competition, there were only 20,000 mobile users in Morocco. Okay? So it was a bet of saying, you don't see it, but there's huge pent-up demand. Okay? Uh, Fertilizer is the same thing. The, the average uh, use of fertilizer in Africa is, in terms of kilograms, is one-tenth the world average. World average is about 150 kilograms per hectare. Africa is less than 15 uh, on the average. So you have two ways to look at this. You, you either say there is an opportunity to 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 bring fertilizers to the African farmer. Uh, and, and the reasons they, have, they are not using fertilizer is they don't have access, not that they don't want fertilizer, they want fertilizer. But then we took a, also a challenge that was inspired from the telecom regulation, is the telecom experience, is that Africa decided that it would leapfrog, so to speak, that because the fixed line penetration was also nothing to speak of in Africa. Mm. And, and many were thinking, no, let's first develop the fixed line and then we, we can talk mobile. Mobile is kind of a, uh, an add-on to, to the fixed line. And it's the mobile thing that took off very quickly and with, the, I would say, innovations that didn't happen elsewhere. Mobile payments started 20 years ago in Africa before they even came to, to, to the Western world. Uh, in Kenya and Pesa. Uh, so in, t in, in fertilizer, we, we, we looked at it through the same lens. And we said the opportunity is not to bring the standard fertilizer in Africa, but to manufacture fertilizers that are adapted to the plant and the soil and African conditions. So we took the bet of saying, that the African fertilizer market is not going to look like the others. Let's go through the, the, the same way that the mobile was more adapted to the African conditions. Let's adapt the, our products to whatever situation is in, in, in the African countries that, uh, where we operate, which is about the whole of Africa, but about 40 countries in Africa. And we decided to, not to bring the, the standard fertilizer, but to, to, to manufacture bespoke, so to speak, or, 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 or adapted fertilizers or customize the fertilizer to the soil and the plant. And it was very successful indeed. That fertilizer is cheaper than the standard one. It's more productive because we use less nutrients. It's, it's cheaper because we use less nutrients. We don't force the farmer to use nutrients or to buy nutrients that are not fully absorbed by the plant and the soil. And it is much more environmentally friendly because by not abusing fertilizer uh, or overusing it, you avoid the runoff in the, in the water table or, or in the air that's associated with overuse of fertilizer. 